I'm Staff Sergeant Andrew Dominguez, and what I have here is a typical sniper loadout that I would take on most missions. Here I have the M2010 Enhanced Sniper Rifle. It is equipped with a Mark IV variable scope from 5 to 25 power. In front of it I have an AN PVS-30. Uh, it lets me see at night with a see-through so it doesn't interfere with my reticle. It's effective out to 1,200 meters. Notable feature is that I have a collapsible buttstock that helps me for transportation. The gun can hold a six-round magazine. Here on my left, I have a M110 semi-automatic sniper weapon system. It is also equipped with a Leopold Mark V, 3.5 to 18 power magnification. On top of this is a Storm mounting bracket with a Storm SLX, also to aid me with night operations, and also is equipped with a laser rangefinder for ranging targets. It can also hold a 10 to 20 round magazine chambered in the 7.62 millimeter uh, ammunition. Here's my rucksack that I would use for most uh, sniper operations. This would have my standard load. So depending on the amount of equipment that I have in here, I can be anywhere from 35 to 65 pounds without water. So we have a fighting load and an approach load. The fighting load is really going to hold me for that three days or less. And the approach load is what I'm going to use for extended durations. Easily accessible on the outside, I have a ghillie suit that I can use to help me for my infiltration. This particular configuration is set for a rural environment. On the back of the ghillie suit here, I have artificial uh, camouflage known as jute. I also have incorporated 550 cord or paracord that allows me to tie down larger pieces of vegetation. In here I have hair ties that helps me hold in smaller or shrubs of grass. Uh, things that I would need to fill in the gaps also when I have the larger plants. When it comes to camouflaging and blending in, a uh, ratio that we go off of is 30-70, 30% of this artificial and 70% natural. And what that does is it lets me rely heavily and adapt to my environment that I'm currently in and the artificial is just more of a filler. Same thing here for the ghillie pants. Uh, I also have included a zipper for ease of access so I can leave my boots on when taking them on and off. Reinforced stitching in the front, also with uh, canvas or condura that helps me uh, protect it and the durability of it so when I'm low crawling or lower uh, movement patterns. Typically a sniper will have two or three depending on the environments that they work in. I can have one for urban specifically or I can have one for rural. Easily accessible right on top, I have my Bushnell tripod also with my sling to help me for transportation if I'm carrying it. So the tripod I can use to hold uh, an observation device such as my uh, M151 spotting scope or I can have uh, my gun clip in here as well. I can use it to assist me in standing or kneeling shots. Here's the spotting scope that I would use for observation. It clips right into the adapter much like a, a camera would on a tripod. The magnification on this is variable from 12 to 40 and this is what I use to aid uh, my shooter getting on target and observing the what we call trace and the fall-on for, uh, for the target engagement. I can also, in an observation setting, I can have this for literally that static observation and help me uh, magnify in if need be to positive identification or just get a better picture of what's going on at further distance. Here's our Ashbury tripod, another tripod that we can use for lower level of observation, such as if I'm laying in the prone or in a hide site. So this also would hold my M151 spotting scope. It just clips in with this adapter piece as well. Here's a hog saddle. This right here will clip on with an adapter to my M1 or my Bushnell tripod. What this does is allows me to place an optic or my weapon in here, again, to help lock in my standing or kneeling positions for shooting. A big tool that we use and rely on is a, is a clipboard. One that holds all my documents or sketches, uh, logs that I will use on a patrol. I have a weather flap here, so I use that to protect it from the elements when I am actively writing or sketching. In sniper school, we're very analog because it has a redundancy. So in the event that I don't have a camera or it goes down, I have the ability to sketch uh, an observation area or objective area. I also have a multitude of pens and markers, pencils. Having a calculator is handy because that will help me uh, with the mill relation formula that I use. The mill relation formula is a, a math problem that we will use to figure out the distance to a target. So it takes the constant of 25.4, I times it by my target size in inches, and then I divide that by the mill reading that I have, which will give me my distance in meters. Most snipers will have either 100 mile hour tape or electrical tape. It's more of a, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. 
a tape measure also. I need to know target size in inches. If I have something on the spot that is near me, which is the same out in distance, I can use that as a reference point. And if I had maps or any other uh, topographical aids that I would use, that would be in here as well. Really accessible, I like to have a multitude of rear bags or shooting bags. They call it a rear bag because of the position that I hold it. It goes at the end of the buttstock, and I would use my non-firing hand to hold it. And it helps me make those real finite, minute adjustments, raising or lowering an elevation. Uh, a lot of people will make these by putting popcorn kernels, airsoft beads. Uh, you can get these professionally made or you can make them yourself. Always have to have an MRE in the bag too. So these are meal ready to eat. Come with a main side, our main dish. There's a side carbohydrate, uh, starch, and a protein item in here as well. And uh, loads of snacks too. You can find Skittles, cookies, and other uh, juice, juice beverages, powders. I currently have the meatballs and marinara sauce. It is one of my personal favorites. Here in my bag, I have extra M2010 magazines that I would use just in case one of these breaks or I get a resupply. I have magazines to load those bullets up. Here's a Kestrel 5700. This is a Kester anemometer. It's a weather station along with a applied ballistic software in there. This is what I will use depending on the specific round that I'm firing. This will give me the data I need to engage target at distance. I also have here standard issued cold weather gear that I would need for the uh, temperature changes that might happen at, in the evening. We refer to these as a waffle top and a waffle bottom. We say waffle just because of the pattern that, it, that is on it. Are they comfortable? They're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next I have really accessible is my wet weather gear. I guess for that inclement weather or when it starts to rain on me, this will help keep me dry. Here is the parka and the trousers that I have. Uh, the great features on these two is that they are also accessible for me to put these on with the zippers that I can put them on while wearing my, my pants and boots still. And the parka usually comes oversized so that I can still have my, my combat fighting equipment on without having to change anything. Another thing I like to have on the outside, also easily accessible, is the poncho. This is what I will use when I cache my ruck. I can put this over to keep it dry from and I can also use it for a shelter if need be. In addition to what I would carry, I would be wearing a ballistic helmet and a ballistic plate carrier. Inside here, I'm equipped with ballistic plates that are able stopping uh, certain calibers around. You'll see here magazine pouches and spots for my radio. The ballistic helmet that we have here, there's, there's Velcro all over it. It's noted for using IR strobes or beacons used to signal your position to other uh, entities that have night vision. Snipers typically would not use anything of that nature unless we were using it on an exfiltration uh, because we're trying to keep a low, low signature and low visual presence. Moving along towards my more survival tools that I would have, I have a water purifier right here. So in the event that I had to egress or escape and evade, I have the means to purify my own water. Uh, when I fully open this up, uh, it attaches to a Nalgene bottle. Uh, the hose goes into my water source, and there's a pump on here that would go through the filtration into the Nalgene bottle. Fortunately, I have not had to use this. Survival knife here, I would use this to help me, again, in a survival situation. I can use it to kill small game. Here I have an IR transmitter. So again, if I'm needing to evade, I have the means to signal friendly forces by means of uh, infrared. The package comes with a nine volt battery and an IR beacon that clips right on and every second it will emit a flash. It can be held handheld or I can mount it to a helmet. Here in front of me, I have some other specialized items that I would use for mission specific. Starting on my right here, I will always have, always have a data book uh, and also with what we call a quarterback sleeve. If you notice, it'll go right in this Run my forearm here and I can keep uh, shooting data readily accessible. Here, an extra piece of veil I can use to help mask my, my visual signature. I can put it in front of me or help it to drape over my weapon. Here I have additional or spare uh, paracord or 550 cord. I would use this to help me refine or build a better firing position or I can use this when I have overhead cover. Pruning shears here. Use these for my smaller or thinner pieces of vegetation, which what I would use to fill inside my ghillie suit. Here I have a portable handsaw. 
This is literally a chain from a chainsaw. It has wrist straps and handles and I can just saw back and forth. I can use this to cut down larger pieces of lumber or thicker trees that my pruning shears will not be able to handle. I can use it to help me uh, conceal my position in the rural environment. Face paint I would also use to apply this to help me blend into uh, rural surroundings. I would say it's similar to what you'd find at a, uh, a party city when you do costume face paint, hunting face paint as well. Here in front of me I have a few items that I would use for an urban setting. I have various lengths of screen I would use to help conceal my position. With that, metal clamps to help me uh, hold these securely. And that is all the gear a U.S. Army sniper could use on a mission. I mean, it doesn't collect, it's a, what is it, weather monitor? What is it, what do we call it? Anemometer. 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 Chucky. Mm -hmm.